the entire Midwest was covered with thousands of prehistoric burial mounds. Each campsite or village, added their own touches to the way they were designed. The Renaissance is unique. On the bluffs surrounding it, were both dirt mounds and burial vaults of rock. The rock vaults had doorways that extended out. Archaeologists have a problem with the 28 burial mounds, surrounding the Rena site. The average number of mounds for a site the size of Rena was maybe 2 or 3, but we had 28. The length of time it was occupied can account for perhaps, 1 to 2 more at the most and simple math would have had the Rena site at nearly 70 acres instead of 6. 7 were earth mounds and 21 were the stone vault type. All the stone vaults were constructed nearly the same way, leading us to assume all were from the same time period. We have two carbon dates of A.D. 300 and 490, which are in the last half of the Hopewell influence time period. The only way to substantiate that many mounds, is to enlarge Renner from 5 acres to nearly 37. This is entirely possible given the number of recorded sites between Renner and Northeast to the junction of Lion Creek and Vivian Road. An area 300 yards wide and 620 yards long between those two points is 37 acres. Within that area, there are six other sites where all are less than a 10 minute walk from the center of Renner. The earth mounds were laid by first laying the deceased on the ground and covering the body with dirt and then repeating. It appears as if they would have been laid by any modern professional rock mason, without the use of mortar. The rocks came from an outcrop you can still see today between the Palisades and West Platte, near the walking trail parking. Each vault had at least 600 stones and only one could be carried at a time. The nearest vault is one quarter mile from the outcrop. That's a half mile walk for each rock, or three. On top of that would have been clay that would have baked hard. E.P. West was the first in 1877, to do any kind of professional excavation attempts. He worked in the Brenner Mound Group. He had reported counting 25 mounds and 30 years later in 1907, folk reported 18 remaining. Some had been used as crematories, but not all. Some bodies were flat on the ground, while others were bundled. A total of six archaeologists had gone though the mounds from 1877 to 1907, showing little scientifically as a result of their efforts. At other sites, these vaults are on the terminal of a ridge. In Riverside, all but three were just off the north and east side of it. Professor had been a part of the 1907 excavation with limited time. He returned in 1910 and took these photos. They are found for several miles up and down the river, scattered in groups of three and five. They are of two kinds, one made entirely of earth, the other has an interior construction of stone, but outwardly they are all similar in appearance. All have a heavy growth of timber on them. On the apex of one, a stone mound, I noticed a large bur oak five feet in diameter and on another, the decayed stump of a black walnut tree about the same size. The wall of this enclosure was about two feet thick, the inside was as smooth and compactly built and the corners as correctly squared as if constructed by a practical workman. William Likens, 1878 The crypts appeared to have been built above ground, the stone having been borne uphill not less than a quarter or perhaps a half mile, and from a location at least 100 feet lower, the rock in its original beds, Broadhead, 880, Burial mounds were numerous in the vicinity of the Renner site. West of the village on a high hill, an earthen mound 60 feet in diameter and 4 feet high contained a number of burials unaccompanied by diagnostic grave goods. They were clustered in groups at five places. Most of the mounds were stone vaults with well-constructed entranceways oriented toward the south. These mounds had been the object of excavators from 1875 to 1955, at which time they were destroyed by real estate development. Met Ship E. 1967. Here is a photo from the flood of 1951, still showing the remnants of some of the mounds. And a similar view, without the flood water. This view is looking south, with a modern overlay. The Renner Mound is photographed by Vadel in 1937. And the mound, in a 1951 flood photo. 
By the 1920s, only a few remained and were examined by Metshipi and Carl Chapman. After nearly 2,000 years, the stone vaults eventually caved in and were covered over by the natural decomposition and decay of the of the wilderness. Some were covered over with dirt during that time period. When the first permanent settlers arrived in 1843, they didn't know what to make of the features and worked around them for a while. After the archaeological investigations ended in 1910, they began carting off the rocks for retaining walls and fruit cellars. In the book, The History of Platt County, early settlers reported that Indians of their time often frequented the old mounds. They said they didn't know what they did there, but they were there. When making this video, we discovered something odd, and decided we should share it with you. Three of the earth mounds, closest to Renner, were all constructed at precisely the same exact elevation, of 845 feet. This is astonishing, since they are separated from one another by a half mile, at nearly the exact same angles, that only differ by 66 feet, out of a possible 3,000 feet. Then we saw the same thing again, with three further east, connecting the Clam, the Boy Scout Mound and the largest mound. They only differed 56 feet out of a possible 3,800 feet. It's incredible that out of 13,760 feet, that there would only be a 122 foot difference. That's less than a 1% margin of error. They, too have nearly identical angles. It probably means absolutely nothing, but you don't get answers, without questions.